welcome to using Creo. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to modify this frame a little bit so that we can move this post to where we need it to be and maybe do a little bit of tweaking up here. But the main thing is, is how to get this frame to look proper. Now, one thing you can do is you can click on that one element there and say, I want to move it in 3D. Now, you can, if this is an element that wasn't round, you'd notice that I can rotate it and uh, change its angle. Um, and I can also grab these arrows and move it around, but that doesn't necessarily do what I want. But if I select this big dot, can you see it highlight just as I mouse over it? At that point, I can just sort of grab and freehand move this, uh, this bar to wherever I want. Now, the one thing you'll notice is, is that if I move it down here, it's still kind of interfering with this wheel, and I want to have a little more clearance between that circle and that edge. So I'm going to have to increase the size of this frame element. The first thing I thought I could do with this, and I would say that with uh, Direct Elements Express, it's not necessarily super curve friendly. It's not necessarily all that great with working with surfaces and tweaking it, and I'll show you why. Let's say I want to stretch this edge. And what I can do is just rotate this so I get the arrows to a point where I want them to, to be. And I want to pull that edge along to a certain length and say, okay, it's just not going to let me do that. So I'm not going to be able to pull the, the end of this, um, this frame element down so I can get some more of that, uh, more meat on the frame to be able to use with this bar. So what I'm going to end up having to do is sort of recreate a sketch, um, and be able to use this guy. Um, or use some of this geometry to recreate the sketch and uh, increase its size. So first thing we're going to need to do is come in here and set that as active. And you know it's active by the green lines. Next thing I do is I'm going to select on that face and I'm going to create a work plane and I'm going to project the geometry of the part that I'm currently working on so that I have everything there. So now I've got everything I need. One of the things I was hoping I'd be able to do is to take these guys and just sort of pull the endpoints of the these splines around and you can't really do that it's um obviously just not part of the functionality of this software so what i ended up doing is is you can select on a line just like this and we can do an equidistance offset now make sure that you deselect these two guys here it'd be really nice to set that up as the default but i'm not sure how if anybody does then please let me know i'm going to hold down control or not control, excuse me, I'm going to hold down shift and select the two elements and I'm just going to do a little bit of an offset here. Now you'll notice if I do an inside offset that the point kind of comes down just like it did. But if I do an outside offset, one of the things it does is not quite what I want it to is that it doesn't keep that point. But we're just going to kind of have to live with the way that generates the geometry. And we are going to have to come in and I want to erase these outside lines. So. One of the things that uh, a lot of people use is the trim and extend tool, and it works really well for trimming and extending, but it has to have a line of sight. So in other words, the line of this has to sort of have line of sight to where this spline ends. So like, for example, let's say I want to trim that, and you can see I can pull this out as far as I want, but if I want to snap it to the end of this, it won't do that. The other thing it won't do is, is that you can see I've got this, and I could trim this line down like that direction. But what I want to do really is extend it out. So we click on trim, we're going to click on this guy, and it doesn't let me extend this, this spline out. So these are two things that are kind of working against me as far as being able to do stuff. Now, here, let's just use this trim, and I'm going to show one thing I'm sure will come up is I can extend that line out just like that. So what I did, just to double check, make sure people know, is that I click on the element, and I go to the direction I want. And you'll notice that... The red off to the left-hand side of where the cursor is, is actually showing me what it's going to trim. And if I come out this direction, the blue is showing me what it's going to extend. So let's just take this spline and see if we can extend it up to this line. And we can't. It doesn't... The Creo doesn't necessarily... Or not necessarily Creo. Creo Elements Direct doesn't necessarily play that well with splines. So in this case... What we're going to have to do is recreate um, some of the geometry. And the way I do that is, is that I'll select on the line and I will convert it to construction geometry, just like that. And then, again, this isn't necessarily the most accurate thing to do in the world, but it does work. So I'm going to estimate on the end of this line about where it will end. And then I'm just going to recreate it and have the uh, cursor snap to this construction geometry of this line, or of this spline, excuse me and come down and, and just basically trace over top of it. Just like this. And then at the final point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend this guy out as far as I can and try to keep that same curve. 
and I hit the middle mouse button and get that curve the way it was. And I'm going to repeat that to this other side here. So let's follow this guy up and kind of estimate where he'd land if he was on that point. Now it'd be very nice if I'd be able to extend that curve. Um, I'm not sure exactly why I can't, but I will be going out and visiting PTC quite soon. And I will be asking them these questions, which reminds me is if anybody has any good questions, about um, why the software acts the way it does or you know functionality that you would like to see um, let me know write me uh, leave comments in here just underneath the video and I will take them to PTC with me when I go so let's go back to trim and we're gonna grab this guy here and you can see that at this point I can trim those lines off just like that sometimes trimming is uh, just kind of awkward and doesn't seem to work for you and there are other ways you can deal with things one thing I like to do is if you click on a line you can choose split uh, 2d come down here and you'll notice that the cursor snaps to that endpoint so we do that and now I have two elements and that one I can just hit delete and get rid of so we'll just get rid of, out of that split edge and I'll hit delete and you'll notice that I got rid of that line and again we're gonna use the trim and take this line and I just want to trim him off to the edge of this spline right there and do the same over here and again I'm holding down the shift key so that it snaps to that spline so now I've got that advanced uh, size of that frame that I need to have and I'm gonna double check to make sure and you see the green outline of this is that I'm working within this part or the frame part because either a I'm gonna be creating a new part or I am going to be causing myself a huge amount of issues trying to figure out how to merge a couple of pieces so this is the easiest way to deal with things. And at this point, I'm just going to do a pull. But I'm not going to accept the default. Because what will happen is, is if I try to default and I start cutting this way, it's going to literally cut away the material and I don't want that to happen. What I do want to have happen is I want it to add stuff. So when you go to Method, go to Operation, and do Add Material. So now it knows that you want to add material. And then we're going to grab that line and we're going to pull it the other direction. And we'll just pull it out just a little ways here. I know that these frame elements are 10, but one thing you can do is you can hold down the shift key while you're pulling and dragging and hover over some of the geometry. And you'll notice it's kind of hard to see, but the cursor is showing a little point saying that it is snapping to something here. Let's come in here and take a look at it. Well, you know, we can mess around with this all we want but we know that it's 10 so let's make it 10 and we'll say that that's okay so now we've increased this frame size and we can go through and again what I've done before in the past is is that you can select on this plane and you can position the work plane and we're gonna grab this guy and we're gonna move him and I'm gonna position him and again this is one of those things where I'll show you is if I hold down shift you'll notice that it starts snapping to endpoints so I will snap it to that endpoint there and at this point I'm going to do another pull operation and again I want to make sure that I'm adding material I want it to go the reverse direction and I want it to be 10 and we'll just hit the middle mouse button to get all that so now we've increased that frame um, size the way we want to and I'm kinda of done with this sketch and if I really need it I can always grab it again but in this instance I'm just gonna delete him out so that he's not gonna crowd my view and at this point I can come in here and I can select on this bar and say I want to move that body and I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to move him down to some place where he is more useful. One thing I'm going to uh, have you notice is, is that if I move this guy off the side is that it ends up sort of making a cut function within that part. Uh, let's just accept that and show you what happens and that's not what I wanted to have happen. I just want people to be, be aware of what happens when you move some of this stuff around is that it doesn't necessarily give you what you really really want to have happen so we'll move that down we'll hit the middle mouse button to say accept and we're good we've got that frame again we can tweak this a little bit maybe i'll need to uh, delete this guy out extend this inner sort of outline a little bit just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing or something of that nature uh, let's just zoom in here a little bit you know it still doesn't look too bad but obviously the pendulum or the escapement is going to be a bit of an issue. So I'm just going to hide the frame for a moment. Let's come in here and you hit the checkbox and that will hide the frame. And I'm going to grab onto that escapement. We're going to set him as active or the active part. 
And I'll just zoom out and zoom back in because what I'm going to need to do is raise that guy a little bit. So I'm just going to box select everything. And you can see it grabbed that weight and I didn't want it to grab that weight. So I'm just going to escape out of this. I'm going to hide the weight so that way I can't select it. And I'm going to grab all of this geometry here. And what I want to do is, is I right clicked and I can get move 3D. And you'll notice that that kind of snapped into the direction that I want to have things move. But to keep in mind, uh, you can always select on some other geometry, such as that line. And it gives me this guy here that allows me to move him around in whichever directions that I really want. So let's move him up about 20. I'm going to clear and close. There are some errors, and again, they're going to come up again, but... That's fine, and at this point we can show everything, make sure we have the right clearance. Now the weight is kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but that's okay for right now because I am going to have to modify this weight quite a bit. In fact, I might even start again with this weight because I need to make a little notch in it so it lands within that V. But in the meantime, hopefully that's helped you out and uh, gives you a little better understanding of how to deal with splines and trying to move some of the curvy geometry that you might have generated around a little bit so that you know, life becomes a little easier. Uh, basically, get your expectations. It doesn't necessarily meet with the way I would like things to work, but there's always a workaround. So don't over ever stop and sit there and think that, well, that functionality is not here. I can't do it in this software. I think that's a defeatist attitude. And, and generally, if you look around, there's usually a way you can work around and, and get things to work the way you need them. But in the meantime, hopefully that's helped you out, and I'll chat with you guys next week.